Hey guys, how's it going? So I just wanted to get on here for a second. It might even take longer than that. Um, and just express some things. Uh, let me roll up this window because there's probably going to be cars shooting past here. It might be a little loud. Um, so I've been traveling for maybe like a month or something. The Lord had me come from Ohio all the way out to Kansas City, Missouri, slash Kansas, and I need to wipe this. Oh, that didn't really help much. Well, yeah, I'm not going to worry about it too much, so sorry if it's a little cloudy. Um, but yeah, I came out here from Ohio, it was a calling from the Lord, um, you know, a lot of the times I just step out on faith, you know, because I've seen how the Lord works, where when I do that, I feel like just the, you get the coolest experiences of understanding the Lord. Um, you just get to see how he blesses people in general, how he blesses you, um, just the state of the world. And so it's usually really a nice experience. Um, but this coronavirus thing has made it a little more difficult than usual because now we all have to put in an extraordinary amount of faith into the Lord um, in which we didn't necessarily have before, myself included. Um, it really did, this whole experience has really renewed my faith. It, it's helped me see what is important and what isn't, all those things that I got into um, that were basically, you know, me going back to Egypt, but in a different kind of way, it's kind of hard to explain. Like I was, before I was very into fashion and into appearance, um, you know, into going to restaurants, fancy restaurants and eating the best and everything was like, everything had to be the best type deal. <laughs> And it's like almost the same thing happened, except it was like more directed towards like, well, what's this, what's modest and also beautiful, you know? So I really got into the whole modest clothing fashion thing. And honestly, you know, it ended up being to the point where I was almost shopping every day for modest clothing. So it was like, I was doing the exact same thing I was doing before, except it was with honoring the fact that God, you know, he wants us to dress modestly. But what's the truth? The truth is the Lord wants us to dress modestly, but he also doesn't want us to worry at all about, you know, food being provided and clothing being provided and that kind of thing. Um, so this time has kind of refreshed that in my mind, um, in which I had to realize like I don't need to worry about those things like the Lord has my back no matter what um but you know there's still some doubt in my mind about other things um you know I came out to Kansas City and there's a tour group um I won't say the name of it but it's on Facebook it's a Kansas City tour group and I had said hey you know guys what's up I'm in Kansas City, you know, I'm looking for a place to stay. Can anyone help me? No one responded. <laughs> I think I might have got like 40 likes and no one responded. Um, and I was kind of like, I think I waited like a week because I was like, well, maybe people are busy, you know, I don't know what's going on with people. I'm just going to wait. Somebody has to respond. No one responded after a week and a half. And so I wrote on that group and I was like, you know, you guys are supposed to be brethren. And, and when a sojourner or a stranger comes into your land, you know, you welcome them in type deal. It was a pretty good rebuke. And I thought I was being mean. Um, but then the next day I was like picking up stuff around um around Kansas City, just in this neighborhood. And the Lord had pointed me to uh, some scripture in Second Corinthians, basically talking about how, you know, people shouldn't be, um, it's not that you shouldn't focus on your family, 
But you shouldn't, the focus on your family should not necessarily outweigh helping the, the widow and the orphan and the stranger and the sojourner. And that's because we are widows and orphans and sojourners and strangers in the land of God. And he called us into adoption as son and daughters. And so thus we're supposed to act in the same way towards people that come into our area. And so, you know, I told all of them this and they were like, well, we have family members that are sick. Well, we need to take care of our family. Well, we're just not focused on that stuff right now. And it's like these Torah keepers, like Torah keepers are the same ones that talk about they keep the law. And I'll tell you what. Yeshua told the Pharisees, it's great that you tithe cumin and dill. But don't negate the weightier parts of the law, like compassion and forgiveness and loving thy neighbor type deal. So what I'm starting to see is, you know, the scriptures are opening up pertaining to this. Um, And don't get me wrong. It's not like I don't love my Torah people. I do because I I do think they're right about a lot of things that um, Sunday keepers aren't necessarily correct about. So, you know, I get on another group in Facebook, I'm traveling, and, you know, I say the same thing, you know, can anybody help your girl out? There's a quarantine, like it's about to be martial law, can I, I don't even have to stay in somebody's house, I can just stay in somebody's backyard, and no one really responded, they said they would pray for me, which was really nice of them, and I appreciate that. Um, and then I had message, I had called a guy from a cafe in the city I'm in and, you know, I just kind of told him my issues that were going on and I told him I would come and like help him because he's having issues right now with anyone coming into the cafe and, and he can't make any money. So I said, I'll come and I'll sit and, you know, I'll, I'll buy some stuff. So I'll help you out type deal. And so I came and I was kind of expecting for this girl to, you know, let me hang out in her backyard or to get me a hotel or whatever the deal. And I'm not saying like I'm entitled to that at all. I'm not. But it's like once these people make a promise, it's been a few times where they don't keep it. And then you're kind of just left hanging type deal. (laughs) So... You know, you kind of have to wonder what's going on. Um, And the Lord kind of told me, you know, part of it is there is a slight, there's fear, of course, with what's going on with the coronavirus. Um, But there's also like a slight, I don't want to say racism or bigotry in the Torah community where people are looking on to appearance so if you look a certain way it's just like the world they might let you stay with them if you don't look that way you're not getting in type deal but again like I said these are supposed to be keepers of the law like you're you're that's what they talk about that's what they brag about oh I'm a keeper of the law and you're not a keeper of the law and 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 Sunday Christians this and Sunday Christians that and that was the same way I was saying that kind of stuff Um, But honestly, like, his people are going to worship in spirit and in truth. And really, um, you know, what's going to happen is the tares and the wheats are going to be separated. um, And we're going to know who's really trying to follow the law of God and who isn't. Um, It might be some Sunday Christians. It might be some Torah keepers. Like, the the road is very narrow. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to belong to either camp. Because I know for me, he told me to come out to church in general. um, Because it's it's religious and they want to force all sorts of man's doctrines on you and that kind of thing. Um, But, you know, the Torah community is also into uh, man's doctrines. Sometimes they can fall into Judaism. Sometimes it becomes all about conspiracy theories and that kind of thing. Um, But either way, you know, like I would expect the Torah keeper, 
even more so than the Christian to be the person that's like, hey, come on in, sojourner. Like, I have a place for you. Um, but I do want to give this one girl props because she did invite me to dinner uh, one night, which was super nice. And she let me sleep at her place. And I was like, okay, I felt a lot more rested after that. <sighs> I could catch my breath for that day. And so I was really thankful for that. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's, this is not how it works, guys. I understand that you don't keep, keep Christmas and you don't keep Easter, but it's more than that. It's, it's, you know, <laughs> don't negate the weightier parts of the law. Um, if the Lord's truly protecting you, then he's not going to let anyone come in your house. That's crazy. So I'm not crazy. I would be a very helpful person and, and that kind of thing and very appreciative. And I will probably even give people money. Um, but there's just no, there's no hands being reached out in this time of trial. And it's just very, very peculiar to me. I personally haven't really seen anything like it before. Um, cause you know, even in inner city places, People are very helpful. Um, and these are the Sunday Christians that we're talking about. So, I don't know, man. And then another thing I just want to talk about is just the the hate. The hatred of the Hebrew way um, by Christians. Just Christians just always hating on Pharisees. Just always hating you know what? Yeshua went to the Pharisees several times because he wanted them to repent. Like, he doesn't want the wicked to die, okay? So if you're considering the Pharisees wicked, he doesn't even want them to die. But we get these people that are like Jew haters. And by Jew haters, I mean by like people that are practicing the Hebrew way. And it's, it's evil. Like, you're being grafted into Israel. It's not vice versa. So I feel like there needs to be some respect there and and also some maybe some searching of the roots so you can understand a little bit better. Because um, people have just attacked me and attacked me and, and on their page they're talking about love, love, love. And I'm like, no, that's not how it works. You don't just love people that are like you. You also love the people that aren't like you. So in the name of Yehoshua, I'm praying for all these people to come to the truth, myself included. I'm praying for repentance in the body, um, for you to just open up a greater understanding of truth, Father, and for your spirit to just pour out, pour out, Father. Give us understanding. Father, you do not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love, Father. And we pray for that spirit of love to be poured down on other people how you want it to be, Father. Help us Help us reflect who you are and what you do for us with other people, Heavenly Father. In the name of Yehoshua, amen. Bye, guys. Thanks.